Hello. Good afternoon. We will uh, initiate this uh, plenary session. Um, just to give you an idea, I'm, I'm Christopher Neal. I'm the director of research at the Water for Food Institute. It's my pleasure to be here and, uh, and moderate this session. Uh, just to give you an idea of the order, we are going to first, we have the honor of having the governor of the state of Mato Grosso, Brazil, here. I'll introduce him uh, a little later. But before uh, he gets started with his talk, we're going to show you a video about Mato Grosso to give you a little bit of context of what this enormous state in Brazil is about. And uh, the governor will then say some words, and then we will end the session with Dr. Marcos Hale Costa, who will talk a little bit about the project that we're partnering uh, with between universities, association of farmers, and uh, Water for Food, and the government. So let's get started with the uh, video on Mato Grosso, which I presume, here we go. What the world wears, what the world needs. Much of this begins here quality international certification while respecting the law and the environment. Mato Grosso is the largest Brazilian producer of corn, beef, corn ethanol, cotton, and soy, responsible for more than 10% of the world production. sanctuary state for one of the richest in Brazilian flora and fauna. In order to preserve all of this natural wealth, agribusiness transformed itself, aligning technological efficiency with sustainable growth. With one of the most modern agricultures in the world, Mato Grosso increases its productivity exponentially. produce the less we deforest and the objective is to reach zero illegal deforestation. To this end, programs are being executed with international partners and the monitoring by satellite of the entire geographical extent of Mato Grosso. Presently more than 62% of the state preserves its native vegetation. Another objective is to neutralize carbon emissions by 2035 in the Mato Grosso territory. 15 years before the United Nations world target. And what a territory, over 900,000 square kilometers, where Germany and Spain together could fit inside, and where over three and a half million inhabitants live. It has the largest gross value of agricultural production of Brazil and has one of the country's largest growing GDPs. It's a breadbasket of opportunities with demand for new highways, railways and industrialization of agricultural products too. Another sector to highlight is the production of biofuels and clean energy such as hydro and solar which contribute to this state's agribusiness being one of the most sustainable on the planet. Backing all this, development is also from a change in mentality of local political leaders, where the governments become an effective ally to the investors, cutting through red tape, plus legal and fiscal certainty, and our constant investment in infrastructure, education, health and public safety, create a favorable environment for business and partnerships. Equally important in a strong state that generates surplus and today materializes the biggest program of works and actions in its history. Last with three distinct biomes, the Cerrado, the Pantanal, and the Amazonia region. Mato Grosso has the potential for another great enterprise 
tourism, teeming with natural beauty throughout its territory, the business has great prospects. This is the Mato Grosso that awaits you with open arms. The warm friendliness of its people with an enormous capacity to produce with efficiency and with serious sustainability policies to preserve that which is the most valuable, the environment. Mato Grosso, the region that most produces food and preserves the environment on the planet. Invest in Mato Grosso the state with big opportunities. Thank you. So now uh, I'd like to introduce the governor of Mato Grosso, Mr. Mauro Mendes. Uh, he is an electrical tech, electrotechnical engineer by training and has been involved in many industries uh, in the state. He served as the very successful mayor of Cuiabá, the capital, and uh, then became governor four years ago, and he just got reelected for another four-year term with 68% of the vote. So uh, um, I we're very uh, honored to have his presence here and uh, search for partnerships. Uh, this morning he met with our governor, Jim Pillen, and they had a uh, a breakfast together and, and talked about opportunities between the two states that have a lot of similarities, as you saw. So uh, please give a warm uh, welcome to Mr. Mauro Mendes. And I will be the official translator. Boa tarde a todos. Good afternoon. Eu peço desculpas por não falar muito bem o inglês. Preferi, então, falar em português e pedir ajuda do nosso professor para fazer a tradução. He apologizes that his English is not, uh, he's not comfortable enough to give it in, uh, the talk, so he asked me to do the uh, translation and interpretation. É a segunda vez que eu tenho a oportunidade de vir ao estado de Nebraska e na oportunidade anterior eu vim para visitar uma importante empresa do setor de irrigação. O estado de Nebraska, assim como o nosso estado de Mato Grosso, Nós estamos no centro dos nossos países e somos ambos dois grandes produtores de alimentos. The, both Nebraska and Mato Grosso have commonalities. They are both in the center of their countries and also very important food producing uh, uh, states. E nós temos grandes interesse numa cooperação estratégica com o estado de Nebraska e com os empreendedores do estado de Nebraska, porque vocês têm, desde academia, universidades, mercado, grande conhecimento e competência na área de regação. And uh, they are looking forward to a partnership with the state of Nebraska, because in the state we have uh, all the components uh, together, the education, the agricultural research, uh, the irrigation sector and the governance of water. O estado de Mato Grosso, ele tem quase 904 mil quilômetros quadrados na sua área total. It's a state, Mato Grosso, with 900 uh, and 4,000 square kilometers. Um, yeah. E esse estado, como já dito anteriormente, ele está no coração da América Latina e bem ao centro né, do nosso país, o Brasil. It's in the heart of South America and right in the center of the, uh, Brazil. Seu tamanho corresponde a dois países e como comparação citamos a Espanha e a Alemanha. And Spain and Germany are there for scale to give you an idea of the, of the size and the scope. 
Nós somos um Estado que tem grandes áreas de preservação ambiental e eles se destacam por ter três biomas diferentes, a Amazônia, o Cerrado e o Pantanal. Nós somos um Estado que tem uma grande área de ecossistemas naturais uh, uh, e tem três dos ecossistemas mais importantes no Brasil, a Amazônia, o Cerrado... Uh, um, Uh, uh, and the Pantanal wetlands. E o nosso estado, ele é um importante e o maior produtor brasileiro das principais commodities agrícolas. And it's the state that's in first place in many of the main agricultural commodity crops. Nós temos o maior PIB agrícola do Brasil. Nossas exportações elas estão na casa de 21 bilhões de dólares e nós representamos quase 10% da das exportações brasileiras na atualidade. They, uh, their um, GDP are, are, uh, is around uh, 21, 21, 21 billion dollars of uh, exports that it generates and uh, they're uh, the first uh, in Brazil in terms of exports. Nós somos um grande produtor de algodão, de né, um grande produtor né, de também de milho, um grande produtor de soja, de carne e de etanol de milho, que é inclusive uma grande empresa, grupo americano, está lá hoje no nosso estado liderando essa produção como parceiro de empreendedores locais. So as you can see here, they're in uh, number one position in the production of all these crops and livestock and beef, uh, 34 million head of cattle. That's quite impressive. And uh, now the uh, corn ethanol is coming in and it's an American company that's uh, driving uh, the uh, production there. Na produção de soja, o país que mais produz soja em todo o planeta, em primeiro lugar o Brasil, segundo Estados Unidos e o terceiro era a Argentina. Hoje, para vocês terem uma ideia, o nosso estado, só o Mato Grosso, já superou a Argentina. Se fôssemos um país, nós já seríamos o terceiro maior produtor mundial de soja. So, uh, Brazil has become the number one producer of soybeans in the world with US in second in Argentina in third, but Mato Grosso has grown so much that now it surpassed Argentina, just by the state itself has surpassed Argentina. Nós temos uma característica do nosso bioma que nós conseguimos produzir duas safras anualmente. Nós temos lá um regime de chuvas que praticamente né, temos chuva durante oito meses do ano, o que permite ter duas safras com boa qualidade. So they have uh, approximately eight months of precipitation a year, and so they're able to produce two crops uh, during this period, uh, typically uh, soybeans and then uh, short season corn. Nós queremos crescer essa nossa produção e o grande desafio para o crescimento é fazê-lo mais mantendo a preservação ambiental. They want to grow this production, but they want to do it in a fashion that preserves the natural environment uh, and all those ecosystems that you saw. And irrigation is what they're evaluating. Nós temos no estado de Mato Grosso um dos principais biomas com 53% do nosso território. Ele é composto por um bioma amazônico da floresta tropical amazônica, que é hoje considerado um dos grandes patrimônios mundiais. So as he mentioned, uh, 53% uh, percent of the state is an Amazon biome and so uh It's a, an important uh, biome to maintain and to preserve, right? 
Existe uma clara compreensão de que nos próximos anos um dos grandes desafios da humanidade é ter um desenvolvimento sustentável, mas ao mesmo tempo manter em crescimento a produção de alimentos. Até 2050, todos os números mundiais convergem para demonstrar que haverá um aumento da população do planeta e um aumento do consumo de alimentos. There's a, a need in the world to maintain sustainability and with the growth of population uh, in 2050 there's a it's forecasted that you know to to reach that goal we're going to have to uh, increase the production of food considerably in the planet. Queremos aumentar a nossa produção, porém queremos ao mesmo tempo preservar esses biomas mas principalmente o bioma amazônico da floresta tropical amazônica brasileira. So we want to increase the production but we want to preserve the ecosystems and biomes and mainly the Amazonia uh, uh, ecosystem. Para vocês terem uma ideia, nesta parte amazônica do nosso território, se você tem mil hectares de uma propriedade, você só pode utilizar 20% só pode utilizar 200 hectares. 800 hectares deve ser totalmente preservado. So, as an example, if you owned 1000 hectares in the Amazon biome, you were only allowed by law to explore 20% of it. Okay? You would be forced to preserve 80% of that native forest. Então, para crescer a nossa produção nos próximos anos, nós teremos que contar cada vez mais com tecnologias, com as novas tecnologias, tecnologias dominadas em muitas partes do planeta e principalmente nos Estados Unidos. So, to preserve that biome, we need to uh, intensify existing agricultural areas with technologies such as irrigation, right, to increase the productivity in the existing uh, uh, land. Por isso que nós estamos aqui nesta conferência e por isso o nosso grande interesse em conhecer e aprofundar as nossas relações com o Estado de Nebraska, com seus pesquisadores, com seus atores econômicos, porque a irrigação é, sem dúvida alguma, uma das maiores oportunidades que nós temos em Mato Grosso para crescer a produção nos próximos anos. And that's why they're here participating and uh, looking for partnerships with Nebraska because they view uh, irrigation and all the experience that we've had managing water as fundamental in helping them uh, uh, move ahead in this area. Se nós olharmos hoje a grande produção que nós temos, a parte que é feita com irrigação, ela é muito pequena. Hoje nós estamos cultivando 12 milhões de hectares em todo o território para a agricultura. E 1,5% é feito apenas 1,5% com irrigação. So right now the agricultural productive area is about 12 million hectares in Mato Grosso, but only uh, o potencial de área no nosso país, né, em Mato Grosso, nós podemos ter nos próximos anos um potencial em torno de 10 milhões de hectares convertidos para a irrigação, dos quais... 4 milhões de hectares estão no estado de Mato Grosso. So, a recent study identified that there's 10.4 million hectares of potential areas to expand irrigation in Brazil, of which almost 4 million hectares is uh, in Mato Grosso. O nosso desafio é fazer um estudo para conhecer com mais profundidade as características dos nossos aquíferos o que hoje, atualmente, nós não conhecemos muito bem. So there's a need to study the water resources and mainly the groundwater uh, aquifers in the region to uh, 
monitor and establish and mo mo model and see what the availability of water to be used sustainably. A falta dessa tecnologia de irrigação e outras que ainda não estão presentes em nosso estado fazem com que a nossa produtividade por hectare ainda seja muito baixa, principalmente se comparada com a produtividade de algumas áreas aqui nos Estados Unidos. So, um, because uh, if you will, if you compare the productivity and the production of agriculture in uh, Mato Grosso, uh, it's uh, lower in terms of tons per hectare and yield uh, compared to many areas in the United States. Como exemplo, na produção de milho, a nossa produtividade média é em torno de 6 mil toneladas, né, por 6, 6 toneladas, 6 mil toneladas por hectare. Aqui nos Estados Unidos está em torno de 15, 16 toneladas por hectare. Quase so, três vezes mais. So their productivity of uh, corn is around 6 uh, metric tons per uh, per hectare. And uh, there's regions in the U.S. that attain anywhere from 12 to uh, 15, 18, depending on if it's irrigated or rain-fed and so forth. Então, esse desafio de trazer essas novas tecnologias irá permitir uma ampliação da agricultura irrigada com utilização do grande volume de águas que nós temos mapeada superficialmente e aquilo que nós queremos conhecer das nossas reservas subterrâneas. So, the goal is to uh, tap into this potential, uh, first study it and see what's available and uh, expand uh, accordingly. O Brasil é um país que tem aproximadamente 20% de todas as reservas de água doce do planeta. Brazil is blessed with 20% of the fresh water reserves of the planet. O problema é que grande parte disso está na região amazônica, aonde nós não podemos utilizar além de no máximo 20% da área para qualquer atividade econômica. Much of that fresh water, as you can imagine, is in the Amazon basin, which of course is restricted for development, other than the 20% that he noted uh, on private property. Por isso que o crescimento da agricultura irrigada, ela deverá acontecer principalmente com este estudo que nós queremos iniciar e a utilização de aquíferos subterrâneos. So that's why um, they want to expand the, uh, the irrigated agriculture in the state by using groundwater and uh, wherever possible and that's why it's important to do the studies. And uh, Dr. Marcos Hale who is going to talk about those studies afterwards. Uh, e esse trabalho para que nós possamos encontrar o melhor caminho para dar esta segunda onda de crescimento na nossa agricultura. Ele já começou, já existe algumas áreas que estão sendo dedicadas a pesquisar e a implementar a irrigação. So there are already some areas in Mato Grosso where uh, irrigation is expanding and studies have been made and uh, and this process will continue. Aqui, rapidamente, uma visão das principais bacias, aquilo que nós temos conhecido no estado de bacias sub, de águas subterrâneas, de províncias hidrológicas que podem conter aquíferos né, bastante significativos, o que vai permitir uma grande expansão das águas né, subterrâneas para a produção de alimentos no Mato Grosso. So this is a snapshot of the existing, uh Uh, geological strata and groundwater, known groundwater systems that need to be studied further. E esse desafio que o mundo tem hoje para os próximos anos de preservar o planeta, ter uma economia de baixo carbono, mas ao mesmo tempo aumentar a produção de alimentos, é um desafio que o Brasil, mas em especial o estado de Mato Grosso, poderá dar grande contribuição. So we hope to uh, be able to uh, attend to the um, sustainable development uh, of increasing the production of food while preserving the environment. And that's the, the big uh, 
challenge. Aqui neste gráfico nós mostramos a vocês ao longo de uma série histórica a partir de 2001 como mudou o comportamento com relação ao desmatamento das nossas florestas, aonde houve uma forte redução a partir do ano de 2008. So this graph shows the uh, significant decrease in deforestation beginning in 2008. So that would be the green bars, right? Uh, um, and so you can see uh, um, how much uh, it decreased. E a partir de 2011, do ano de 2011, nós começamos um processo de forte crescimento da nossa produção agrícola né, em todo o país e principalmente no estado de Mato Grosso. So in beginning 2011 there was a big increase in the amount of production of agricultural products uh, in Brazil mainly in Mato Grosso. E esse seguramente será um desafio que nós vamos ter todas as plenas condições de entregar ao mundo aquilo que o mundo deseja, que é uma economia de baixo carbono reduzindo e zerando as nossas emissões até o ano de 2035, 15 anos antes da meta global. So their goal and challenge is to create uh, and intensify the agriculture of low carbon, um, low carbon in emission and, uh, and they want to do it by uh, 2035, 15 years before the uh, 2050 uh, Uh, deadline. Como eu disse anteriormente, esses grandes, dois grandes objetivos estão na meta de todas as grandes intenções mundiais: preservação e produção de alimentos. So these two objectives, uh, preservation of the environment and the production of food, are the goals of many places in the world and many countries. E o nosso estado de Mato Grosso, ele é um bom exemplo deste grande objetivo mundial, que ele produz muitos alimentos e preserva hoje 62% da sua área. Mato Grosso é um bom exemplo disso, onde é um grande produtor de food, mas também sucessivamente preservando uma grande área de terra com ecossistemas ecossistemas. Estas áreas elas estão exatamente iguais a 500, 600 anos quando as Américas foram descobertas. So those ecosystems are in the same uh, state as they were the, when Brazil was discovered uh, several hundred years ago, right? E assim que nós queremos deixá-la pelos próximos anos, e é por isso que as novas tecnologias, principalmente a tecnologia de irrigação, ela é extremamente importante para que nós possamos cumprir com esse objetivo de preservar e aumentar a nossa produção. And that's why irrigation is going to play an important role uh, in, in meeting this uh, challenge where they can intensify and take the pressure off these uh, ecosystems. E assim que nós gostaríamos de ampliar as nossas cooperações internacionais em busca de novas tecnologias, em busca de parcerias estratégicas com conhecimentos científicos para que nós possamos continuar com este nosso grande papel de produção e preservação. That's why they are searching, are searching for international partnerships so that we can work uh together uh, industry and universities and research towards this goal of uh, increasing productivity intensifying but preserving the environment and doing it sustainably por isso que estamos aqui no estado de nebraska porque vocês têm muita semelhança com o que fazemos e tem muita tecnologia nesta área de irrigação e queremos consolidar as nossas cooperações com a Universidade de Nebraska, com os produtores, com investidores e com todos aqueles que comungam desse mesmo objetivo, que é produzir e preservar e contribuir com a preservação do nosso planeta.
So that's why they're here in Nebraska, because this is a state where, which has accomplished a lot in these areas of uh, agricultural technology, irrigation, and uh, preserving the water resources. So they want to build these partnerships so that they can learn and do the same. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Mendes, and in a small token of appreciation, whoops, <laughs> watch out, the invisible table. <laughs> here, let's go back here. <laughs> we would like to give you this uh, um, so you could put it on your desk and remember us. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and to close out the uh, uh, session, uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Marcos Hale Costa. He is a professor of uh, meteorology at the Federal University of uh, Visosa in Minas Gerais, one of the partnering, one of our partnering universities that uh, um, in Brazil on several projects, including this one in Mato Grosso. Um, Marcos uh, got his uh, doctorate at University of Wisconsin in climatology and has been involved uh, in research in the Amazon basin uh, for many years and today he is going to talk a little bit about what we want to accomplish in Mato Grosso. Dr. Costa. glad to be here today with our partners in this study that we're starting for the state of Mato Grosso, the governor and several members of his government here who are uh, very much interested in this study and funding it. Uh, also our partners, the, the Dorothy Whatever Food, represented here by Dr. Chris Benil, and and uh, also the Association of Irrigators of the States, very much interested in this study as well. So uh, I'm going to talk about how we do this sustainable irrigation expansion in Mato Grosso, what are the needs, the limitations, and the challenges mainly. Uh, well, the governor has already introduced that. I would like to draw your attention just to a few a few details here. The duration of the rainy seasons, uh, like I said, is between 180 and 250 uh, days, depending where you are in the state. It has a monsoonic climate in the Amazon region in the north and a uh, uh, tropical climate with a uh, dry season, AW, in the, in the south. And uh, I'll show an example how this looks like for the city of Sinop, for example. You can see there is about eight months of of uh, uh, rainfall in, in this region and about four months of little rainfall. So this is usually enough for uh, two, two seasons in a year. So this is, a, you, you may have seen figures like that. This is exactly the transition between the first and the second crop. The first row of harvesters are harvesting the first crop while the second row of planters are planting the second crop and this is exact, done exactly on this on the same at the same time because nobody has a day to lose because it, the, the rainy season has this limitation. Mato Grosso has been very success, successful in uh, implementing this this double cropping system. Uh, Gover said that the numbers in production increased by 480 percent in 20 years which is amazing by any standard, any global standard. 
and currently produces the, uh, plants 12 million, roughly 12 million hectares of soy with a soy output of 44 million tons. Another 7.4 million hectares of maize as a second crop with 46 million tons of metric tons of, of maize. And also cotton is emerging as an important crop in, in the country is already the, the first producer and most of the cotton is produced as a second crop. And you may be wondering, okay, we have 2,000 millimeters a year of rainfall in six to eight months of rains. Why bother to irrigate? Yeah. And the reason, the, the reason, there are mainly two reasons for that. The first one, uh, like the, the, the yields of maize are not very high, they are low because this, the, the, they plant the, the, the maize at the end of the rainy season and the rains are a bit irregular and the maize is under uh, some water stress. So it produces, uh, it, it has an yield, this is uh, uh, actual, uh, actual data uh, from, from the counties, uh, it has an average yield depending on the, on the on the duration of the rainy season. I'm saying here five tons an hectare for, for the time series we're using for a, an average 20, 20, 220 days of rainy season duration. But the yield increases as the rainy season increases and the yield decreases as the rainy season the duration decreases. And the yield increases Increases or decreases by 0.6 percent per day of rainy season, increase or, or, or a change in duration, and the planted area of maize also changes by 1 percent per duration of the day, and that's how that works. Nobody knows when they are planting how much, uh, how, how what's going to be the duration of the rainy season, but they know when the rainy season starts. And then if it starts to, if the rainy season starts too late, most farmers give up the second crop and plant only the first crop. And those that risk the planted, they risk having low yields. So if the rains start in September, great. Time for do, to do a, a good, uh, two good crops. If it starts in mid-October, first, first half of October, you're probably going to be fine. If you start in the second half, of October, the rain starts second half of October, you're under very high risk of having low yields in the second crop. If the rain is starting in November, forget about it, plant only the f uh, first crop, okay? So this, this is typically what has been happening in the past, but if we look at that uh, 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 from a from, uh, climate change perspective, a global change perspective, the rains are starting later and the rainy season is getting shorter in Mato Grosso. There is a, 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 a great deal of literature that starting from this paper by Ron Fu at UCLA in PNS in 2013 and several others that followed, uh, including this, this one here that the cause, hey, maybe we're watching the rise and possible fall of the double cropping systems. That exactly because this uh, rainy season, where the, the double cropping system is based on, the rainy season duration is decreasing. So, and this is the this is a, an actual case that we studied in the last 40 years. Is that's the upper hill does much as that's in the south. Uh, eastern part of the state, <coughs> you can see that this is the duration of the rainy season, the graph on the left. Until 2000, every year had a rainy season longer than 200 days. So second crop was fine, you get fine yields. After 2000, the rainy season started having uh, uh, shorter events of rainy season. In the last 20 years, we actually had 10 events with less than 200 days. 
which goes for lower yields, including a couple in the range of 180, 190 days, where the yields are very low, and this uh, usually not enough for uh, uh, making profits. So it's it's uh, risky. Uh, it's a climate risk that uh, farmers take when they when they plant. Uh, w when the rainy season starts too late and they risk planting a second crop. Okay, at the same time, farmers realize that in the irrigated area, which in, in the same region, the Upper Rio das Mortes, which was virtually nothing in 2000, 5,000 hectares, uh, they felt the need to invest in irrigation systems so they would not uh, have to deal with these losses due to short rainy seasons. And the uh, irrigated area has been increasing, not uh, steadily, but uh, has been increasing quite fast. It, it went from 5,000 hectares to 45,000 hectares in 20 years, which is uh, a tenfold, a ninefold increase. Uh, and so th this is, we have mapped all the center pivots in the, in the area, made a time series of that, and we expect that uh, this, this scenario for the future. So here's the, the historical time series. Now, I don't have a uh, laser pointer here, I guess, but do not be distracted by, by the colors around. Please pay attention to the state of Mato Grosso, which is the uh, let's say, bottom uh, of the figure, you see that historical period, the, the, the rains start pretty much, all the Mato Grosso, they start in September or, or early in October, but there is a gradient from north, uh, northwest to southeast of the state of the date of the start of the rainy season. What we're predicting even the most optimistic scenario we are pre predicting for the for 20 years from now is a reduction in this is is a delay on the onset of the rainy season, a reduction in the duration of the rainy season on the order of 15 to 30 days. That's the difference between being able to have a second crop every year and not having not being able to have a good second crop every year or maybe losing, making money one year, losing money the next year. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 what I'm saying is that irrigation is not only an opportunity to increase yields, not only new technology, it's actually a need, a necessity to, uh, to, to increase maintain the second crop system working and producing uh, 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 more uh, and, and eventually producing our third crop. So uh, we could just just by irrigation, I did some back of the envelope calculations here. Uh, the production of grains, of, of, of maize only, may increase something to 100 mega million tons of maize, which means three times the current uh, production if irrigation, if irrigation is adopted around. And there is a, a possibility to plant a third crop of a short cycle, usually beans, uh, pulses, or other special grains. Um, the limitations for that is that we don't exactly know the water availability like the government said exactly, and most importantly, the, the groundwater, no very little. Uh, power availability, that will require a major investment in power, uh, credit interest rates, and uh, uh, other institutional limitations that will need to be uh, modified to uh, back this massive increase in irrigation. And the, the final conclude here of the slides, the main challenge is actually expanding the current monitoring network, which is currently very rarefied today. It's a very 
sparse network of monitoring stations. Uh, I, I plotted here only the stations relevant. The green areas are where the croplands uh, are grown currently in the state. And, uh, and uh, these stations are the ones that measure water uh, flowing through these regions. Okay, I ignore the other the other stations in, in the in the states. Okay, and we have very few of them, and that monitoring network must grow along the irrigation area. It's uh, it's uh, an imperative, and it's also a challenge because that will uh, require uh, uh, building a, a new a new. Uh, network of, of monitoring stations, groundwater, surface water, meteorological uh, data network in the state. And this is something that will, will have to happen in, along with the growth of irrigation. Uh, so this is the main uh, message I would like to uh, convey today, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So, are there uh, any questions for Marcos or even the governor? He's still here. Well, I was interested, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a farmer, uh, <laughs> Sylvia Carlson, I'm a farmer in Nebraska. I ate too much. Um, so when you make your point about this monitoring of these stations, here over the aquifer, there is monitoring because you can only have so many wells. Now that, that really only started to be effective in my view and my understanding of the history in Nebraska within possibly the last 50 years. And it's only been um, really paid attention to since the drought has been going on. So what will happen in Brazil, who, who controls this monitoring and what difference does it make? If you wanna do another well or you wanna do something else, I mean, I understand you wanna measure it, but measuring it isn't the same as, as saying how many wells can go down and how much can be done. I mean, it's a governance issue you know, it's the government as well. And of course, I can say being a farmer, the farmers here are not too happy about that. You know, it's our damn water and we can use it the way we want to. Well, no, it's really a river. I mean, the water water's up above and then it goes down below and then it comes up above again and so on. And uh, these aren't, aren't dumb people, these are smart people. But it's hard to get that through that it really is a, a community or a, even a larger resource than just your half section or your section of water. So I'm interested in how that relates to trans, not transfer it, but how in another country, how you will be handling something like that. Thank uh, you. Okay. Um, well, well the, 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 the way water is managed is a little different in Brazil than it's here in Nebraska. Uh, the river water, the, the surface water, is monitored typically by the federal government. It's responsible for installing and operating the stations, while the groundwater is a mix of uh, government and state responsibilities. And uh, We, I believe we need a, a, new, a new paradigm in terms of water monitoring in Brazil. Okay, the, the one that we have uh, is, uh, pretty much centered on the federal government. I don't think it's working very well. And we need to involve, we need to grow the monitoring network, but we need to do that in partnership with uh, the, the, the state government. Forget Brasilia for a while. And we need to do that in partnership with the, the irrigators themselves, the users of water, not only irrigators. Okay, 
you have to have everybody involved in the system, somebody, uh, everyone paying their share and everybody contributing data, everybody knowing what's the data and reduce uncertainty. We're very concerned about the uncertainty of how much water is available. We don't have a network of, of uh, one-to monitoring that's not even close to what you have here in Nebraska. So our major concern is knowing what's, what's in there. And then we will be able to make decisions based on data. That's, that's our, our first major goal on that. No, no, they need a permit, and it's the Secretary of the Environment of Mato Grosso is Maureen sitting over here. It's her her department that, that gives the permits for in groundwater. In no. groundwater, groundwater, no. it's attribution of the state. Yeah. So what they would like to do is not transfer what Nebraska does, but learn and see what can be adapted. To, to the state of Mato Grosso, and they're particularly interested in this joint private sector state monitoring of groundwater and, and use that to take the decisions in the local governance. So they, uh, they want to learn from our system and adapt it and, uh, uh, to the Brazilian reality. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, a pergunta é se os, in, os ambientalistas estão envolvidos nessa história. Na história de monitoramento de água subterrânea e tal. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, go to the source. Em Mato Grosso, nós temos o Conselho Estadual de Recursos Hídricos, que é o CEIDRO, que fazem parte diversos membros da sociedade, inclusive entidades ambientalistas, que participam desses projetos. Então, o monitoramento da água superficial e subterrânea é acompanhado pelo Conselho. Então, existe esse, vamos dizer assim, um, um grupo de pessoas que envolve a sociedade, o poder público, os produtores e... Você lembra de cabeça? 28 entidades. Então, um, so há um board a council of about 28 entities that include environmental uh, entities in, in, in part of that uh, group, along with government, uh, uh, representatives of society, and farmers, and so forth. So that's the council that uh, is going to examine any potential change in the rules and, uh, and determine uh, if it's going to work or has a potential of working. Oops, we are getting the three-minute warning. Any, uh, oh, go ahead, uh, Igor. Professor, so I want to ask you about uh, how the project schedule that we are developing in Brazil, to explain a little bit uh, more about it, what, which actions uh, are being taken and how these actions will mix together the, the groundwater and surface water monitoring and which results we're going to have in next next years or next next time well what we're planning is for uh, make no mistake about that okay we irrigated that much we don't even have the the, the industrial capacity to to build equipments to do that in 10 years Okay, so it, it's a major, major change. What we, uh, wh what we're planning to do is, is get initial answers in one year, okay, rough numbers on how much can e we irrigate and where and what infrastructure of uh, monitoring and, and energy is necessary so we can start to work with these numbers immediately after about a year from now. And we plan to conclude most of the study for the, the most uh, promising areas in, in three years, okay? So the state will have uh, numbers in their hands so they can act according to, to their uh, 
strategies, all right? So this is the rough planning that, uh, that we have. Well, I think that concludes our session. Uh, thank you very much to the speakers, uh, Dr. Hale Costa, <laughs> Governor Mauro, Mendes. <laughs>